Welcome back to All Real Estate, all the time with the only general contractor in town who wears a dress every day, Whitney Nicely. Hi, have I ever told you why I have a general contractor's license and why I'm the only general contractor in town that wears a dress every day? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, well, let me tell you that I have a general contractor's license because it was 2008 and we were in the middle of a recession. And in 07, I got my diploma from UT and it just started this whirlwind of getting licenses. I, I couldn't get an MRS before my name, so I decided I was going to get the rest of the alphabet after my name. So I went to Mine Safety and Health Administration. I went to their mining training, so I was certified to be a underground and surface miner and i'm trained to teach truck drivers how to be surface miners and then grief. <laughs> later in 08 i went to general contractor school and learned how to be a general contractor because what had happened is on the mines that i was certified to teach we needed a general contractor so that we could build roads with the gravel that we hauled from the mines that makes it, sense it was this weird little circle and none of the miners were general contractors and uh, my uncle is a general contractor but he doesn't work for the company anymore and he was thinking about retiring and all this stuff and i was like you know what fine i'll go get a general contractor's license it can't be that difficult <laughs> let me tell you it was more difficult than getting out of ut <laughs> like it was the hardest exam the longest exam that i've ever lived through in my life and i hope and pray i never have to do that again because <laughs> it was horrendous okay so i'm working for my mom's dump truck company it's walker's truck contractors and my great my great grandfather okay so just one great started the company in 1939 so we've been in they business. Had trucks back then they did wow. we helped put the um not the sod but the dirt the field dirt in nayland stadium back in the 40s oh, okay we helped haul dirt and rocks to the dam before wow. we were a real company we were still working out of the dam in 1930 31 32 when they were building the dam up till 36 we weren't an official company then we just had a couple trucks we became a company in 1939 so i mean fourth generation trucker i look pretty good for nearly 80 <laughs> years in business don't i yeah you're not bad <laughs> and my mom it looks pretty good for nearly 80 years in business too so she's running the show up there and we've got about 75 dump trucks uh, we got a couple over the road trucks we've got a little over 100 people that work full time 24 7. we have to be at the mines 24 7. holidays weekends christmas all the time we've got trucks out on the road and so in 08 i was working for the family truck company and i loved it it was so much fun and as a uh, bonus i would sell these used dump trucks to dirty old men that would fly in from around the country to buy old worn out dump trucks <laughs> and i was the best salesman that we had <laughs> of course dirty old men coming in <laughs> exactly my papa figured out that these dirty old men like talking to me <laughs> and they never wanted a refund and they they knew i didn't have a clue what i was talking about basically i just memorized what the guys had told me about the truck and so then they asked me questions i'd say you know very open and honestly that i'm not making any warranties here you inspect this thing as much as you want to i don't know squat about it <laughs> well, at least you're honest but i know how to write an invoice and fill out the title and that's there what you go. need me for <laughs> I know how to put pictures up on the internet, and that's why you need me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so once Papa figured out I was kind of handy, he taught me a very important life lesson, real estate lesson, and trucking lesson. And that's that's how I got really into real estate is because my Papa, he was a real estate investor. He used to um, have a couple different companies. I mean, we have four companies right now, and we've had several throughout the years, right? So my Papa told me that when I was selling dump trucks, it was very important to give them a light bulb. And what he was saying in that is if I had a dump truck for sale and I knew this guy was driving up from Georgia or flying in from North Dakota or whatever, and they would say, I'm going to buy this truck, make sure it's ready to leave the lot when I get there. Well, that really meant I'm coming to make sure I want to buy this truck. Please have it clean when I get there <laughs> and have it at the site, not out on a job when yeah. I get there. So that's what I would do. But I, I got to this point where I wanted it perfect because I, I thought that when they told me they were coming to buy it, they were telling me they coming were coming to, to buy, buy it. it. Yeah. That's not what they meant at all. There's this whole negotiation thing afterwards. This is whole the process they really want to go through. It's the same with buyers and sellers. There's a process that they want to go through. There's a negotiation that they want to go through. So you have to give them a light bulb. And so I wanted to make sure all the lights were working, that the horn was working, that uh, the backup alarm was working, that the brakes were all good, and all this stuff. And Papa said, no, you need to give them a light bulb. So if the light bulb was broken, they could negotiate that into the price. 
you know, that's a $5 light bulb that we could say, okay, well, we're not going to fix the mud flaps, but we will fix the light bulb. Or we, you know, is there anything wrong with it? Is, are, you, are you ready to go? And they're going to say, well, you know, they, they want to negotiate. So if they can get, you know, me to throw in a light bulb or throw in a mud flap or just throw in something, throw in, you know, a new appliance in the kitchen or throw in an extra garage door remote. I mean, that's like 20 bucks. Plus, so you feel like you're getting something then, you too. You feel like you're, and that's important for the buyer to feel like they're getting more that they're getting a bargain, that they're making a good investment, that this is worth what it's worth. And it's also in the process. It's a relationship kind of thing. So if you can, you know, give them something. And that's why closing gifts are so popular with agents, because they want to leave with the warm fuzzies that, yes, this was an awful traumatic experience. Yes, we both got a couple gray hairs over it, but we lived through it. And look, I got a pretty present. You know, they put my name with the address on it or some. Yeah something but it makes you feel good it's it's wrapping up the whole experience and putting a bow on top so give them a light bulb give them a present give them some sort of negotiation and remember that the negotiations are never over until you're at the closing table and even then (laughs) you can send people a bill (laughs) (laughs) so i and I, i still love trucking uh, after my papa passed in 11, it just lost its sparkle because we hadn't been real close my whole life until he figured out I was useful and I could make him some money. Then, you know, it wasn't even then that he was like a papa and he took me under his arm or whatever. He thought I was an apprentice <laughs> and he could teach me how to truck. And trucking is what he loved. He loved the stock market too. So once he passed, I lost my sparkle with trucks. But I knew real estate was there. We had, you know, four or five companies in the family, and I was tired of dealing with the trucks. That was four, but the fifth company was real estate. And I, the two months before Papa passed, I went to real estate school and got my real estate license. So I was already on the real estate path. I just thought he would be able to apprentice me a little bit more than what he ended up doing. But even, you know, looking back on a lot of the lessons he taught me in trucking, I can put it into real estate lessons, just like the light bulb. And I know even if I go and flip a house, I'm not going to say that I leave the light bulbs out, but I may put one light bulb in the bathroom light fixture above the sink. And then people can say, I mean, you're going to put the rest of the light bulbs in, aren't you? Well, yes, of course I am. Okay. And it's just that psychological pull. It's just that little bit of a negotiation. It's just that little bit of extra work, you know, like I could have said, no, you got to go get your own light bulbs. I mean, but come on, seriously, just go put the light bulbs in, but give them a light bulb. So keep that in the back of your mind. If you're flipping, if you're negotiating, if you're doing any kind of anything out in the business world or the real estate world, always keep that light bulb, keep that little cherry on top to make it the last negotiation. And I know that when I was selling trucks, if they asked about the fuel mileage, I'd sold it. When I'm selling houses or renting apartments, if they ask about the electric bill, how much electric bill is, I've sold it. Once we get to that point in the conversation, the light bulb is the cherry on top. Once they want to know what they're going to be looking at for regular expenses on the truck or the property, I've sold it. We're in. We're good. And at that point, I'll throw in the light bulb. (laughs) And if you take it right now, (laughs) I will give you a new pack of light bulbs. So I got a little sentimental on you there for a second. I'm sorry about that. But I, I think it's important for people to know where I came from and that I am, I'm a trucker. Um, our bucks come from trucks. And so if you are looking, you need, you know, a hole filled up, whether you need dirt in it or gravel in it, or if you are planting the garden, I know we're looking more at the harvest time of the season right now, but if you need some fresh, pretty topsoil, We have topsoil, we have gravel, walkers, truck contractors can handle any kind of need that you have for heavy hauling. And the phone number up there is 933-0225. It's walkers, truck contractors. We're in the yellow pages. And those are still a thing too, by the way. And we are all over Facebook. Find us, Walker Truck Contractors, and please give my mom a call. Her name is Kathy. Tell her that you heard me on the radio and that you're proud of me, and she should be proud of me, too. (laughs) Also, I'll just put a little stance in for Whitney Buys Houses. I do have three houses available right now, so if you are looking to buy a house, please let me know. I'll sell my houses. You don't have to do the lease option, but the lease option is really cool for people that need it. The other thing is, 
I took in a lot of applications over the past two weeks, which means I could sell these three houses in the next week and then I don't have anything. So if you have an empty house that you need to sell, and I mean sell quickly, I am looking at being out of inventory by the end of August. So that means I need to buy three houses this month, which is an awesome opportunity. Whether you have a mortgage on it, you're underwater on it, or my favorite house is a free and clear house. And y'all have heard my ads that say that I love empty, vacant, free and clear houses because I can work an owner finance deal on that and it just lights me up on the inside, okay? That is my light bulb right there. <laughs> if you'll give me the owner financing, I promise that we'll figure out a different way to get a light bulb into the situation. So check out WhitneyBuysHouses.com. You can submit a lead sheet there. You can call me, whatever you need to do. Oh, follow us on Facebook also is Whitney Buys Houses. And if you need gravel, we travel. Walker's Truck Contractors, 933-0225.